Mr. L live and that boy leveled Boy, 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 boy leveled Boy, 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 boy leveled Mr. L live and that boy leveled Boy, 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 boy leveled Boy, 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 boy leveled What's up, people? It's your boy Level Head back with another live and level gamers podcast. My boy, uh, Mr. Live is not here on this cast, but we'll get him in on the next one. I have two people with me, familiar people, familiar voices. Uh, first of all, I got my boy K Bum 20 from Straight Talk. What's up, K Bum? What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? It's about to be a good one. Okay. And we also have the one and only John Shaw. Uh, so, John Shaw, go ahead and introduce yourself, bro. Well, it's John Shaw, Full Effect Gaming, STFU and Play. Full Effect and STFU and Play.com. Now, anyway, so let's get it in, man. Uh, it's been a minute. Uh, we haven't done a lot. I haven't done a live and level since pre E3. <laughs> and even that video was uploaded. Uh, a day after E3 started, uh, <laughs> so it's I, I've been slacking. So I thought, hey, you know, I ain't done one in a while. I haven't done uh, live and level. I called up Mister L Live. Uh, right now, he having some technical difficulties with his uh, internet, so he couldn't uh, be a part of this one. And I hit up John Shaw, and I hit up my boy K Bum, and we showed up. So we're here to make it uh, happen. Um, we're going to try to do at least 45 to an hour. We're going to try to keep it in a comfortable range. I'm, I'm tired of doing a three-hour podcast, people. Um, I do have a life. I'm pretty sure K-Bum has a life and a wife just like me. And I know John Shaw is in the same boat we all in as well. So uh, we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to start off with a topic. First of all, let's talk about what you've been gaming on. Uh, so I asked K-Bum 21st, bro, what you've been gaming on? Uh, I guess for me, I've been uh, uh, I've been gaming on that uh, that Destiny beta. I don't hopped on that since uh, since that release uh, last week. Okay, I've been trying to get my level up, get my game up on that. I've also been uh, getting it in with that MLB the show on the PS4. Still on that? You still on that show? Still on that, man. I got disappointed. I just lost the first round of playoffs against the Pirates, man. It's been hard. I MVP this year, and I still lost the first round, so I got to go a whole more year, a whole another year before I get back to the playoffs, but uh, that's pretty much what I've been on. Okay. John, shout what you been gaming on, bro. Been doing the um, Destiny beta, some Call of Duty, and then today I've been on Mario Kart trying to get them last 250 CC races. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm kind of envious of y'all because y'all both on that Destiny beta. Uh, I don't have it, so I can't say I've been playing the beta, but y'all just hit me that I can uh, get on it on the PS3. I might have to jump on it and check that out. Um, I've been gaming on that Mario Kart, but really I've been gaming on his music. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if y'all saw the, the, video, uh, the track I put up um, about... About a week and a week ago. That's that's the one you're gonna do the video to, right? No, that's not the one I'm gonna do the oh, video okay. to. Uh, that's that's uh, my group. That's the group stuff. Okay. But that was my personal. That's my personal album I'm working on alongside the group project. It was called Life. So uh, I, I sent it to all you guys, and uh, some of y'all gave me some feedback, you know. And and all you listening, man, go check out that song. Let me know what you think. Yes, I know it's gospel. I know it's uplifting. That's what your boy do. But go check it out, man. Let me know what you think, man. I'm trying to show my skills. I produced that beat, mixed it, and all that. Everything you're hearing is all your boy, Level Head. I wanted to show y'all kind of what I do outside of this podcast and then YouTube. And that's really what my heart is. That's really what my focus is. And this is kind of like a hobby and an outlet, you know, to do, you know, I love gaming as well. So, but anyway, that's what I've been on, man. It's really been tying me up. And uh, but it's a good tying up. I, I enjoy it. So hey, yeah, that track hot though. I do like that, man. Uh, I, I, I need to it, check man. it out for real. I, I second that. That beat is dope. For real, <laughs> check that <laughs> out, man. I was banged that. I like it. I got some more stuff, but the video you were talking about, John Shaw. We actually 
um, I should have that. We was actually working on that last night far as talking about the concepts and all that. Um, the dude that's going to shoot is coming down uh, to my town, man. He doesn't live here. He's about, a, about two hours up the road. He's going to come down and shoot that. And uh, when we get it all edited and, and uh, ready to go, I'm going to upload it. And I'm going to see if y'all can guess which one is me. <laughs> Where he staying? He's staying in the loo. Okay. So like Maybe I know who it was. Yeah, he's staying in the loo. Uh, but anyway, so let's get it in. We on dialogue, chopped it up a little bit, so we got back comfortable with each other. It's been a minute since we talked, bro, so, you know, we had to get it back. And so let's get into this, man. John Shaw, I want to start with you. Um, you and Hip Hop Gamer, well, you responded to a video of Hip Hop Gamer that was really intriguing to me. And I think it's a conversation that the gaming industry as a whole, all of us as gamers... That uh, entertain and you know what I'm saying visit these different sites and you know what I'm saying spend our time you know patronizing the sites us on YouTube who spend time making these videos all of us are playing a part in a big picture and a big melting pot that is gaming and in the gaming industry so uh, hip hop gamer made a video talking about the journalism and the it was called white black and the truth. And he was dealing with journalism and the journalists. And, and you made a response video on that topic. So what I want you to do is I want you to kind of set up what the conversation was about, what's really going on behind the scenes. And then me and K-Bum want to jump in the dialogue and throw our two cents in as well. But I kind of want to bring this to people who might not uh, frequent your channel or frequent Hip Hop's uh, Gamers channel. But I thought it was a very interesting and timely uh, conversation. So let's jump into that. All right, so um, hip hop did a video. I was at work and um, uh, I watched the video, and I um agree with a lot of his points. So, like, matter of fact, I think I agree with the whole video. And um, and so I was just gonna leave it there. I, you know, I just watched the video. I was gonna leave it there. But then I started reading the comment section and started reading the other, the other, the little bit of the other thread or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of bothered me the comments that was being said. It's like you know. You shouldn't dress like a thug or something like that. You know, it's, it's got to the point like, you know, I get so tired of people labeling baggy clothes and, and, and their baseball cap is dressing like a thug. Okay, you know? well, well, break down what hip hop was talking about so then they can better understand why you have well, a problem with the he, he was talking about like just how when, when we go to events or whatever, we get, you know, they, they try to turn us away or they turn their nose up at us because the way we dress or whatever, right? You know, black, the black journalists. Yeah, black journalists. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Or if you know, but or it's not always just the ones that you know that don't. The urban conform. journalists. The yeah, urban. the one that the one that that don't conform to where the way they want you to conform to. Okay. You know, because I ain't gonna say not everybody gets treated like that, but most of them do. Okay. Most of us do. You know, but or basically when our casual wear is not equal to their casual wear. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what I, I had a problem with. And so he was just basically talking about that and how. Yeah, you know, it's like it's just disheartening that you gotta go in there and it's like before you even talk anything about games or talk before you even open your mouth, you're already being judged by what you're wearing. Right. And it's not and it's like it shouldn't be like that. And what I wanted to talk about because of the what which I did in my video is it's like this is not like see people I think they understand like they 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 put it like as yes, you were going to get a job, right? Mm -hmm. This is not the same thing. You know what I'm saying? This is not the same thing. When you're going to these events, you're going to cover the games for your fan base. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, these are not, most of these events are not dress up events. They're casual events. They're like in a hotel room, a hotel, like sometimes they're in just a hotel room. You know? Um, like if you, like if you go to, um, to E3 or different conventions, sometimes they're just in hotel rooms. You know, on a T, on a regular TV, you know, like a hotel suite or something. It's just like that. Um, a lot of other places they're just in um, little meeting rooms, mm -hmm. and they're just casual settings. They're not dress code settings, you know. So it shouldn't matter what I come to the place in, unless I'm butt naked, you know. <laughs> and it's like wearing baggy baggy shorts, uh, or so with hip hop, he wears tank tops or in, in a baseball cap. Doesn't mean anything, you know. And I get tired of people saying, "Oh, that means you're a thug. You're a thug." And I never knew thug had a dress code. You know, cause like you know, from uh, you know, I'm an older cat, and other people older cats, and you know, we know about the older, 
I'm the older generation, you know, and not even just the older generation, just the uh, the kingpins of the the gangster world. Now they wear suits, right? You know what I'm saying? So all the killers from the old days, you know, Al Capone and all them, you know, Lucky Thompson and all that, they wore suits. So it's so so should a suit be labeled as thug material, gangster material? You know, it's, it's not labeled like that. And actually, these these characters are celebrated in Hollywood. You know, but you know, but it's because they're white. You know, but when we dress a certain way, we we got we already get stereotyped as being thugs and, right. and hoodlums and criminals. You know, we wear a hoodie, we're a criminal. You know, it's it's, it's irritating. Right. Now, like, I, now I know this. Is, let me say this because we got more than black that listen to this uh, podcast. Actually, it's probably more. More whites and uh, different uh, nationalities that listen to this podcast. So I know this is a very sensitive and sometimes uncomfortable conversation, but it's a needed conversation because I, I have I agreed with what John Shaw. I agree with what you were saying. I agree with what hip hop gamer was saying as well. But it was some other parts that I feel like we as you know African Americans don't help ourselves as well. So I, that's oh, why I want, I want to say what you what you saying like how when you say like when I'm saying this I don't have anything against any white people right, right. people know that I don't have anything against that but also reason I, I keep a lot of this this is the first time I've actually talked about this in a long while but I keep a lot of it bottled in but I feel like I shouldn't have to but I keep it bottled in and don't say nothing because every time we speak out is we're crying right right you know what I'm saying. <laughs> It's like we're crying when we speak out about being treated unfairly or whatever. It's like it's all oh, it's here's that black guy again. He's talking, he's talking that stuff. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like no. It's like I didn't ask you for nothing. I just asked you to you know treat me like you treat anybody else in here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because like me personally, I'm I'm, I'm not, I just I had this viewpoint like yo I'm gonna come into the room and if you offer me something I'll take it. If you don't want to offer me something then fine get out of my way. You know what I'm saying? But don't treat me differently. Then you I, treat everybody else. I agree. Anymore. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Because I, my thing is like, I'm gonna get what I want regardless if you're gonna give it to me or not. You know? And so it's like you can either help me or you cannot help me. But I just don't want to be treated differently just because of the color of my skin or because of what I'm wearing. Mm. It doesn't. That doesn't mean nothing. And especially when it comes to something that's supposed to be fun. It's video games. I'm not on the Academy Award red carpet or nothing. You know? Right. Right. I'm not at the high society club where everybody's supposed to be wearing tuxedos and I came in in a t-shirt and some pants. You know, it's like, it's video games, people. All this, it's like, all this shouldn't even be, shouldn't even be factored in video games. It's like, but, but think, my other thing I was talking about in the video is like, why is it that when I wear a t-shirt, shorts, and a baseball cap, I'm looking at it differently from when this guy comes in with a t-shirt, shorts, and flip-flop with his crusty toes out, but, He's he's okay, you know what I'm saying. But I get my I get nose turned up at me, but he's okay. You know what I'm saying. I just I, yeah, I, I, I think, that's what I'm saying. That's not fair. It's, it's a double standard. It's obviously a double standard. But uh, let me let me get let me let uh, K Bomb jump in. You know, based off of a little bit that you have just uh, shared. What you what's your take on a topic? Because I know this topic ain't uncomfortable. It ain't you know. But hey, people. We try to be real, and I, I'm gonna share my thoughts, but I won't. I won't cable them to get an opportunity to jump in here. Um, well, well, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say my piece, and, and like you said, level. Uh, a lot of this uh, is not a comfortable topic. Uh, we can try to act like this stuff doesn't exist. We can try to act like this is not reality. That everything is, you know, wonderful. And uh, I, I agree with John Shaw said is that. When we do point out the fact that it's not wonderful, that it's not this perfect world that people want to perceive it to be, we get called out as the people, you know, complaining, crying, crying wolf or, you know, saying just trying to make a scene or just trying to make a point. Just want to make your voice heard when it's not the case at all. You know, wrong is wrong no matter what what or who's bringing it to you. You know, that, that, that's just because, you know what I'm saying, me as a black man bringing up the fact that I, I may be looked at wrong just because what I'm wearing, you know, it, 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 it's it's still wrong. Um, that's still the, it's still the point. And what what John Shaw was saying, you know, I, I agree with what, what he's saying. And um, the, the thing is, uh, uh, 
uh, a lot of what we do it as and it's sadly I, I talked about this beforehand as a race is that um being a minority some things that that that's done from another minority it, it's almost always generalized Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's when one does wrong, it's almost like we've all done wrong, and that's not something you actually see too much in the white culture. I've actually had conversations. I've you know, I I work in the IT field, and I have plenty of Caucasians in in, in my work field, and you know, even the minds of of the, of my friend that I talk to, and we have a lot of conversations about race because you know, it's 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 better to talk about it than to act like it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. So we like to talk about it, and from his mindset, and I've talked to him is that they don't they don't see themselves as a part of a whole. When 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 they see they see themselves as individual. But I know as a, as a black man, when I when I do certain things and when I I appear in front of people, I feel like I'm representing my people. When, when I do certain things, when I'm out in certain places, when I'm trying to you know put a good perception in people's eyes of, of who I am. I feel like I'm representing my people when I do that. But I've had a conversation with him, and he doesn't even comprehend that mindset because for them, it's, it's, it's individual. Well, I, I won't just say for them, for, for him in the conversation that he's actually came to me and told me it's more an individual thing. And so it's it's a lot of a lot of what you see, and even about the baggy clothes, it's, it's that per, pre, perception, the pre uh, exception of what that actually means, even though it's not true. And, you know, me, me and Level can talk, you know, we, saying we went down to school together and, we, you know what I'm saying, people, in, you can see a dude with, with baggy pants and, 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 you know what I'm saying, wearing baggy clothes, getting a 4.0 in school. You know, it, it, it doesn't change who you are. It doesn't, it doesn't even define who you are just because you wear those clothes. You can still be getting straight A's, going to class every day, doing extra credit work you know in, in the study halls with baggy clothes and and a long t-shirt on but right uh, a lot of things is is it's, it's the perception of what that actually means doesn't actually match reality and for a lot of people it's, it's hard for that it's hard for that to actually come across you know because first thing you see you see and then you judge instead of instead of getting to know and then forming forming your opinion of a person after you know a person you know but like like you said, it's 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 very hard. But I think what you guys are doing, I I I commend you guys for, for actually doing that and stepping out and saying that because you know a lot of it should be said because when we act like it doesn't exist, it can continue existing. But when we step out and actually say something about it and you know point out where we feel is wrong, it's when actually change actually occur. So I, I, I do commend you guys and, and hip hop for his videos for actually stepping out and being bold enough to to be the ones to, to say something about it. Right now, that's I agree. Like I said, I agree with what John Shaw was saying. I agree with what hip hop game was saying, and what you just said is kind of the first point I was gonna make. Like uh, we can't act like it doesn't exist. Uh, we can't act like there isn't a discrepancy between the two, and and the. Uh, Fairness shown between the two is not different. Um, but I was listening, like, uh, th- it was a conversation on YouTube about why a while back, and it was on a few people's channels, they were talking about why the uh, sub count on certain YouTubers that was Caucasian were a lot larger than, you know what I'm saying, the more, the more popular black uh, YouTubers. You know what I'm saying? The people... Some black uh, channels have like, you know, 200, 300,000 subscribers. But then you can look, you can see a few uh, channels that are primarily Caucasian focused or ran by Caucasian or white that was in the million, some two millions. And they were saying how it's, it's an unfairness in YouTube. And I was listening to it and I was listening that, that when I heard watch hip hop's video and then I watched John's video, I was looking at it. And I was like, man, they hitting it all right out the park. And I'm going to leave all these videos in the description so you can go back and check it out if you didn't see it. Because I don't want to be on this too long. But there, then there's the other side to the coin. Okay, it, it is obviously a problem. It's something that needs to be talked about. It's something that needs to be addressed. But then I got to thinking, how do we help our cause? How do we help our plight? Do we strengthen the stereotype or do we help break down a stereotype you see what i'm saying what are yeah. we doing 
as as a communities as a community as you know black journalists or black YouTubers to facilitate a a a, a understanding that there is diversity in our group. Everyone is not the stereotypical um, image that you know most want to say that we are, but. Uh, being in YouTube for this short time, and I don't know how it flows over to journalism. That's why I'm glad John Shaw is here because he is a journalist or was a journalist. I don't know how you flowing now. Uh, do you still consider yourself a journalist, John? I'm I'm, I'm way in the line. <laughs> okay, you way in the line, but you know you know you know the rookies. You know the inside, the back, the back of the scene, how that stuff go on and, and what goes. So you have hands on experience of being a black journalist. So yeah. you're not talking from a you know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, hands off point of view you actually experienced this um, being on YouTube bro and K-Bump can attest to this and I'm pretty sure you can too John there is not many channels that when you listen to it like black that you can listen to where it's, you don't even have to worry about your kids being in the room <laughs> see what I'm saying and I'm not trying to change I'm not saying everybody should be like what I'm saying is I can name several podcasts of our fellow Caucasian brothers. I go on, and you can listen to it with your kids in the room. You ain't gotta tell. Uh, I ain't gotta tell my baby to get out of here or put my earphones in my ear because they it, it, flam, 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 flam coming across. But I, I can't hardly name one outside of this one <laughs> that you can listen to. And and and, and you, so it seems like we ain't in within our own self. We're not diverse enough. We don't have enough to show that there is different things out there being offered. It seems like all our stuff is similar. Like in this YouTube community, I just listened to a podcast this morning, dude. You couldn't even get through half the podcast. The dudes just yelling at each other, cussing each other, calling each other's bees and all these. Other. I'm like, so it's like, how are we helping our own cause? To, to answer, to answer, yeah. to answer and, that question, the reason why you see a lot of that now versus before is because there wasn't a niche for the underground you know okay and so as far as a lot of black journalists they felt when they felt like going to when they when the underground came about it's like it was like more where they could feel at home where they could just talk freely and be themselves right. versus having to talk a certain way and, and and hold their hold their tongue you know so that's why that's why you see a lot of that as far as that it's, it's like the underground of the of the thing it's like adult generated okay you know it's just, but yes, at the same time, yes, we do do need to diversify. Um, a lot of our another problem is we don't support each other. There, there you go. <laughs> you know That's what, what you said in the video. Hit on that. Hit on that, man, because he's right on yeah. the money. We don't we don't support each other. You know what I'm saying? It's like word. Like I, I, I didn't talk about this in the video, but I was talking. I, I was with um you know a group of friends, or whatever, right? And they know I play games, right? But they don't know what I. They don't actually know that I'm actually in the that was in the industry, you know? And so I'm sitting there trying to tell them about different things that's coming out or whatever, blah, blah, blah. they kind of like playing me to the side, right? Mm. Then they go get on the internet and listen to, you know, somebody like IGN or somebody, you know what I'm saying, listen to the white guy talking and say, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, I just sat there and told you that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just sat there and told you that. So they don't value so you because you're too familiar. Yeah, they say, like, oh, you know, uh, uh, he's white. So I was, I, I was like, what's that mean? I was like, you know what, I don't, I don't understand that, you know? He's valid, you know what I'm saying? So when you hear it from him, he's valid. But when you hear it from me, it's it's like I'm just another dude, you know. Right. And that's that's another problem. We don't support ourselves. Um, yeah. In the same way, it's the same like I'm saying with the female games. It's the same with you know how you know it's big. It was a big issue for a while about how female gamers were mad about the way they were getting represented in the games, about how they were getting treated on the jobs, and about how there's not enough of them in the in the industry or whatever. Well, the thing is. And it's the same with black people. We can't ask white people to cover us. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't ask we can't ask them to portray us in a certain way. We're gonna have to. It's about time we have to go out there and do it ourselves. You know, and it's like if you want it done right, you're gonna have to do it yourself. You know, so that's why I said if you want if more and more blacks need to get into game drills. That's why I want more blacks to get into game drills. It's a lot of y'all that can do it, which y'all and y'all already doing it. You just don't know you're doing it. You know. And it's the same with females. You need to get more females in game journals, and y'all need to support each other. Right. You know? And, and it's like I was saying, there's another question when hip-hop video was, are there any 
I guess that's what the, the whole topic came from, because the topic from Neil Gap was, are there any black game journalists? Yeah, you brought that up, and he said no, but you said it. It was. Oh, it's a whole bunch. Right. And that's, but there, we're, we're not in the forefront. Mm-hmm. But it's a whole bunch of us, you know? And this is a whole bunch that I know, and so I know it's probably a whole bunch that I don't know, you know? Mm. And it's like, and there's a lot of black gaming sites, you know, we got the coalition. We got STFU and play. We got um, Gamer Fit Nation. We got the Hip Hop Gamer Show. We got um, Game Fanatics. We got um, Console Kings. We got um, Player Essence. Player Essence. Um, she Attack. Um, There's a whole bunch of them. You know, and I can I can I can sit here going about some of them, but yeah, I can sit here go on and on and on. And then different name, the name, different names. It's a lot of us out here, but because we don't support each other, we don't get out there like other people are out there. Right. And that's what I'm saying. We have to support each other. Um. And that's why. And also, I say, telling it's like because it is basically it's the community. Because if you want us out in the forefront, because this is what Black Bible was saying in his video, um. You control that. The community controls that. So if you want to see more black faces, then you have to support more black faces in the industry. You have to support their videos, their writing, their websites and all that. You have to and you have to ask for them, publicly ask for them. You have to do that. Just like you publicly ask for uh, Adam Sessler or you continually watch an Adam Sessler video or um, Jeff Keighley or whatever. You have to do that. You have to support us if you want to see us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like Malik. Malik Forte, he's now part of Nerdist, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's my duty that if I want to continue to see his work, I need to support his work. Now, I'm not just saying to support anybody if you just to be supporting them. If you don't like it, then don't support it. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's a given. But if you like it and you want to see more of it and you want to see him get, see people get further, you got to support them. You know? Now, here's another one that opened the door. I mean, he's, he's opened the door and he's there. And 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 he's there to the point where he could actually break out and be at the forefront. You know, hip hop cam is there, and he could be at the forefront. But he does whatever he does, and I, I'm, I mean, I think he's trying to take it to a different level than what what everybody else is trying to take it to. Right. But um, but you have to support what they're doing. And you know, and a lot of times I don't agree with everything hip hop camera says. You know what I'm saying? But I still support him because. I like what he's doing. Right. Well, he's a voice. You know what I'm saying? He's positive. You know? Um, and this is it. And that's what I was trying to tell people. Like, you got to support. If you want to see more, you got to support people. You got to support us. You got to watch the videos. You know what I'm saying? You got to click on their websites. You know what I'm saying? You got you to support people. Right. You know? Like, you see you see somebody like, what is it like? What is it? What's that? What's that? Pat, the Penny Arcade Expo. I'm mean, not the Penny Arcade Expo, but the site. What was the site called? Is the site called Penny Arcade too? What site is this? It was a Penny Arcade. I think the site that Penny Arcade was part of or whatever. They had did a Kickstarter or whatever, right? Uh-huh. And they fans basically gave them a half a million dollars just to take the ads off the site. Wow. Just ha- You see, that's, that's the type of support that we won't ever get. <laughs> so we do a Kickstarter. We do a Kickstarter. We 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 we'll be lucky if we get a thousand dollars. And that's coming from experience. I know uh, Torrance was talking about how you know even with STF, you and playing a lot of the things he had tried to start there, he would get some support, but it wouldn't be enough to really. Y'all kind of talked about that in the last morning gamer. It wouldn't be enough to to justify continuing to do it, even though there were faithful supporters. Yeah. And also, oh yeah, and also, see, that's the thing. Like, the support that we got wasn't even enough to be buy one person a plane ticket. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. we had some fans. We they support. They try to give what they can get, and we're thankful for that. I'm not saying that what they did, they could. They, I'm not telling them to give more. They did what they did, but there's a lot of fans that didn't. And it's, you know, but it's like you gotta understand it. We buy these plane tickets to go cover these events for you. Right. We that's where, and that's where I agree with you. I, I, I that's what that, that that when you say that, it's like I was like, you're right. You if I'm paying to come here, I'm paying to, and I'm bringing my equipment, and all and all you're getting is my you getting free coverage from me, even though we make an E3 big, but we gotta pay to come. But y'all get all this coverage because we gonna put it up on our site, we gonna put it up on our YouTube channel, 
and we gonna edit it. You ain't gotta pay for none of it. You getting all advertisement, all publicity, but we had to pay to you know because we want to see you know the, the games first and firsthand and get to touch them. We paying for that experience, but you getting all free advertisement from what we're doing. And then when I turn your nose up because I'm coming in in short time, right? And can't, no, don't t- like I said. If you want to pay me, I will gladly come to your event in a shirt and tie. Right, and what <laughs> and what I was alluding to really wasn't when I said what are we doing to help. It wasn't on that. T- it was more like when I look at our this YouTube community, especially the black channels that I follow, and I would say about eighty to ninety percent of them. I'm just telling you, dude. It's like. We really need to mature in our approach uh, to what we're doing. When I look at, you know, even down to our sites, we need to mature in our approach. We we need to get more professional. Uh, If we really want to entertain and rival an IGN or rival some of these sites, we're going to have to match them in what they're doing and what they're presenting and and why is what they're presenting so more, so much more accepted than, than many other black sites and what they're presenting, even though the information is the same, maybe it's the, the way in which it is being presented that IGN might have their hands up. It's like, you know, I like, is a in my town, it's a small Kmart and then there's Walmart. I go to Kmart for convenience because it's close, but if I choose, if I had a choice, I'd go to Walmart, but I had to draw, I had to drive a little farther. Because what they're presenting in the presentation is that much better, even though I could probably get the same stuff at Kmart. Uh, I was going to speak speak to that. I wanted to say something about that. Oh, go ahead. You know, you know, kind of, and that's kind of the point I wanted to bring. At I, I know what I'm about to say may sound bad, but you know, what I'm saying just just listen to it. Uh, the way to get it, like get some of these websites, because I'm not speaking to all because I don't know all the websites that John Shaw just said, but I'm just speaking uh, on behalf of just black culture. Uh, the way to to make yourself bigger or the way to get more. Is it's going to sound really bad, but not to be so black. And what I mean by that, I'm going to finish what I mean by that, is even if you look at, um, I'll take the music industry, you look at the biggest music stars, it's, it's the ones that, that are more pop than the ones that are more hardcore. You know what I'm saying? The more, ones that, that's more, you know, uh, grimy. The ones that, that sell the most and make the most money, you know what I'm saying? I, I'll take one, one person who started off grimy and, and, you know, and not even gets the most success is when he, you know what I'm saying, kind of he more pop than anything is 50 Cent. You know, it used to be grimy and hardcore and, and Ice Cube, I heard making Are We There Yet movies, you know what I'm saying? He making millions of dollars. So I'm not, I'm not saying set, be a sellout. That's not what I mean by that. What I mean by that when I say about being black is that it's being more universal, not, not to, you know, pinpoint yourself down a hole so that the only people that's going to like your content is a certain genre, is a certain type of people. Because once you once you limit the amount of people that's actually going to like your content, you limit the amount of people that's actually going to want to come to your site. So, so what I'm saying is it just be, being more universal with what you're still being you, still giving what you what you want to do and doing what you want to do, but but not to pin pinhole yourself into you know being so strict and so niche. That there's only a subset of people that he, that wants or that even pertains to. You leave yourself open enough with the content and the stuff that you display, even the stuff you talk about. You know what I'm saying? You leave yourself open enough that any anybody feels comfortable or even wants to come to your site and check out your information and even listen to you talk. So I know it sounded bad, but I just want to make sure I explain what I meant by that. I understand what you mean. And, 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 I, and I agree with you. But at the same time, there are a lot of, like, a lot of the sites that I named, you would never know that they were black. Right, like yeah. Larry Essence. Like, if, if I was to use an example of who, if I was to, if I was to jump behind and put my money, like to me, STF and Play was diverse. I might have with a different different name, but <laughs> uh, the, yeah. the, the, the content we been was, there. <laughs> the, the content is diverse. Is 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 to me is up there. PlayerEssence dot com, dude. I had to give it to uh, Furious Francis. His stuff is legit, and he's slowly creeping into gaining attention and notoriety, and people, and people starting to take note because when you go there, you're not getting it. I, I kind of use how uh, Dave Chappelle had that that uh, segment 
uh, that skit where he called keeping it real. <laughs> what should I do or should I keep it real? Should I, should I just stick to you know, the, the prototypical black, what people think blacks are? Right. And, you know, and what Player S was do to me, he, 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 he don't rob you or he black, but at the same time, if I was just to hear him, all I get is this is a hardcore gamer. You wouldn't get, oh, this is a, 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 a hood gamer. This is a street dude right. who play games. You just gonna get a gamer. And when you see, oh, he's black or he, it don't matter. The color don't matter. It's, it's the presentation is, is a gamer. I don't go to, I, I stopped going to IGN and uh, game uh, spot and game trailers, not because it was a whole bunch of white guys there, because I got tired of, you know, them catering to Pacific, uh, you know, companies. But the presentation is what always brought me there in the first place. It was the presentation. It wasn't because uh, this person was white. It was because when I got there, the quality of the presentation was what I liked. And so I just stuck with it. Um, but when I found out about Player Essence and his quality, I don't even worry about IG. And I go to Player Essence if I want to find out. Or I come to YouTube. And I go I go see what John talking about. I go see... You know what I'm saying? What what the show is talking about, or and some of these other guys on YouTube give me more of my information, but their presentation is very good. See what I'm saying? Yeah. But some of these cats are good. I won't name no names, but it's one cat on YouTube that I think can be big time. But it's his own presentation and where he chooses to go sometimes will, will only like like K Bun said will make him only appeal to a certain audience or people who like that type of. Uh, presentation, but it won't it won't have mass appeal. It won't cross over into right. just being mainstream. Right. So that was my concern. So I was like, that's why I said this conversation is good because it opens the door to talk about not only the plight of the black journalists, but the problems that we kind of inflict ourselves with. I see. You see, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, see, I see exactly what you're saying. See, there's also those types that fit that category that you're talking about, uh huh. But they only reach a plateau, and none of them's ever gotten past that plateau. So they hit a glass ceiling. So yeah. that's why I'm saying. That's why you you would know that I don't know that. So go yeah. ahead. Just they hit that. They hit that glass ceiling, and it's never been. It's never been above that. You know what I'm saying? Like the the highest that I seen was Incar Crow, but even he stepped down. Wow. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like it hits a plateau, and then it's like you don't see them no more because they don't have enough support. The people that yeah, don't get they, behind you them, you don't see them no more. You know what I'm mean? saying? So, do you think that's a uh, okay? Let me say it like I'm a, I, I, think it's, I honestly don't when those for those certain particular people because I don't I don't that's the whole thing. It's it's hard to say because like when the people like y'all you just crying because uh, you just black love. No, it's like because I don't want to label them like that because they do. They do cater to a the more diverse people, uh-huh. but it's like it's hard to say it's not because they always plateau and they right. they never get past that moment. But then all of a sudden, somebody else do, and it's like they and they don't they you know, they not as talented as that person. Though. Right. That's why I was going to ask you the question: Do you think it's this mind? Because some things can't always be that people ain't supporting. Some things can be that the industry is not allowing it to. To grow, it's not allowing it squeeze them out. Like, okay, if this man is growing, and he, let's say, like the guy you just named, to to even get known like he was known, he had to have support. So you can't say he didn't have support. So was this a industry not allowing him to go any farther than what he was? Like that glass ceiling. When I think of a glass ceiling, it's because the industry is pretty much putting a stop to you getting any farther than that. Meaning yeah. they're not they don't want you to get up to the Jeff Keeleys and the I think, I think it's I think it's a bit of that. And That's a bit of, it's a bit of that and a bit of how much work you have to do to get to that point. Okay. To the point to the point that when you turn around and look at all the work that you did to get to that point, you like, you know what? And then you look at the where you want to be at right now, it's like it's not worth it. You know, why am I wasting my time in this field? Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's when they see him branch out to other different branches of journalism. Like, you might see the brother go to NBC, and he'll be doing a lot better than what he was doing in the gaming industry. That's what I'm saying. So that that, that kind of alludes to what you're saying, that is an industry problem. That's an industry problem beyond just the community support. And that means the people that's making it and breaking folks are breaking these folks. 
and they having to go on their own and, and make it happen and it's too much work even though they was making it happen on their own it's too much work to continue to make it happen yes that that and the fact that it's an, it's an illusion see this is this and I had, I had the same illusion you know it's an illusion to what people really think is going on in this game and shit some of these people are making money and a lot of these people aren't okay you know what I'm saying? Everybody thinks it's everybody thinks oh it's the greatest. No, it's really not. You know, I that's why I still work where I work. You know, <laughs> you know so just doing YouTube, man, <laughs> and I don't get paid. It's too much. Look, people wonder why I take hiatuses. One, I need to filter. I need to do after being on YouTube for so long and listen to all this and trying to. I just need to filter. I need to filter through all this mess. And then. Even down to I'm just tired of trying to get all this information and I ain't monetizing the stuff so I ain't getting paid for it. And I got other stuff on my plate that has grown since my father left and passed. My plate has grown so I have more responsibilities than I had before so I don't have the freedom to just sit down and, and record every day. So it is a work just doing YouTube. So I can only imagine having to write an article and and uh, spell check it and make sure it's intriguing and make sure all your points and make sure you referencing who all you used and took stuff from. I bet, shoot, I'll get tired of that. And, and, and plus you're not getting the payment that you need. You can't really live off and sustain a healthy living from it. Shoot, I see, can this, only imagine. See, this, this is what people got to think about. Like, be, to be totally honest with you, you're better off on YouTube than you are doing a game journalist. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You nine times or, or doing Twitch. You know? You nine times ten, you'll probably make more money doing that than you will doing game journalists. Unless you unless you find some place that's gonna willing to pay for your work. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a whole lot of those. Cause the only way the only money comes in is coming to come in from sponsors and it coming from advertising money. You know what I'm saying? Then you think about a site that got five, six, seven writers, you know, you get they like and you gotta split that advertising money, it's like maybe Three, four, five, six thousand dollars a pop, maybe sometimes. It's not that when you spread that out to seven, eight, nine people plus side expenses and all, all that stuff, it's not. It's not a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 worse than way, work, working a um a minimum wage job. <laughs> I, I feel you. And then you paying to go to yeah uh e three and go to like we we're gonna talk about here in a second game uh Comic Con and. Uh, Pats yeah. East and all that. So, and that's that's another thing I want. I want to spread the light to things. It's like it's like I was saying. Like I paid to go. Like because I was saying like, oh, well, you need to stop dressing like a thug. You need to stop doing this and blah, blah, blah. But these people don't understand. It's like these people aren't paying you to go here. Right. You know saying we buy the plane tickets, the hotels, and and the, and the paying the spaces and the food and and the expenses to get to the places to cover to the, come to come to inside this building. To either A, get an interview with you, or B, play your game so we can write about your game or make a video about your game. Basically giving you free advertisement. You have no right to tell me what to wear. It's like, I could understand, like, because I, I had an opportunity to go um to this one, um, it's a press embargo or whatever, um, I mean, junk it. And they were going to fly me out there. But at the time, they sent it to me, but at the time, I wasn't working for the bid bag. Okay. So I gave it to Torrance. I, I sent the, I sent them an email to Torrance because Torrance was still doing the big bag. I had separated, started doing my own thing, and I was like, "Well, only reason I got this was because of the big bag, so I'm going, I'm not, I'm not going to be a uh, shady character and go take this and go to my for my site. I just took it. I said, "Hey, I'm not working for the big bag anymore. Here's 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 um, EIC over here. Let him do that." Um, so basically, they were going to fly me down there to go. Um, he had a race car game, whatever that was coming out. Yeah. And we're supposed to get flew down and go see that. You know? Okay. Yeah, they would at that thing. I would have probably dressed up for that because one, they're paying for me to go. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's a difference, and that's why I don't, that's why I think these gamers they don't understand what's going on in this industry, they, and they treat it like this is like you going to the everyday job, going to like, going to an interview for a job. It's not the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Actually, what we're doing is a service to them. Not yeah. them. They're not servicing us. You know what I'm saying? The video game industry is not servicing us. We're servicing them. We're the ones putting their games out there. We're the ones talking to the games, and our fans are the ones getting the input and saying, "Oh, okay. Well, so and so likes this game, so let me go. Let me go try this game out." Right. 
you know, and I think the most of the gaming community they don't understand that. So that's when I saw those comments, I had to, I had to make the video. I was like, I don't think you understand. It's like, no, I should one, I shouldn't be judged like that. Period. Especially when it's a casual event and you're wearing casual, I'm wearing casual. This is yeah. what I like to wear. So your cat, you're right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this, man. Uh, all the listeners, I'm I'm gonna make sure to have hip hop gamers video. Uh, and John Shaw's video, and I'm pretty sure there was other ones, but I don't know of those. In the description, I want you to go back and familiarize yourself with those videos and, and, and see what the points was and what they was talking about, and maybe we can table this discussion and get maybe even get a hip-hop or get some other people on here that are kind of sensitive to this topic and kind of go into an even broader discussion on it. Maybe, maybe uh, totally isolate that topic and deal with it on one live and level, cause you know uh, that's this just a it's just a, a very to me uh, good conversation. So, but I don't want to stay on it all the whole time. But it, I, I enjoyed it. That's why I'm trying to let you know, John. I enjoyed the video. I thought it was timely. I thought you, what you were saying was making all the sense in the world, and what John, uh, what um, hip hop gamer was saying was making all the sense in the world. I think it's a conversation that. The black community and gaming in general, uh, the black community in gaming and gaming in general needs to have because there are some lessons we can learn to improve our image and, and how we're viewed. And there's lessons that others who try to typecast us need to learn to take those typecasts off what you and what you was alluding to. But let's move on. Uh, NPD numbers came out and, um, it's some interesting things going on. First of all, uh, June was big. <laughs> June was a big month for gaming. Uh, all uh, all the newer systems, except for the Vita. Sorry, uh, uh, Sony fans. Uh, hey, Bomb <laughs> Twenty. I'm just being real, man. I ain't trying to uh, throw no salt or anything. It's all good. <laughs> but the Vita ain't. You know, the Vita is not doing well. But outside of that, uh, the numbers are in. And there was some interesting stuff. So let's break down the numbers, and then uh, I want to get y'all take, and uh, we can move on from this. So the PlayStation 4, of course, was the number one selling piece of hardware um, in June, selling, I am think it's saying I wrote down 259,000 units, somewhere around there. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comment section. Um, the Xbox One finally... Uh, Start selling, I guess. You know, it sold 195 in that range, 1,000 units. The 3DS sold 152,000 uh, units. And the Wii U sold 140,000 units. Now, uh, for the Xbox 360, the Wii U, and even the 3DS, the Xbox, uh, not the Xbox 360, but the Xbox One, they sales doubled. And the Wii U sales jumped two hundred uh, two by two hundred percent, and the three DS sales jumped by fifty five percent. So, and I start with John since I uh, I started with K Bomb on one. So John, I'm gonna ask you this, man. So what's your take? Uh, what what's it, what's this, what does this say to you? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's good. It's good for the game companies. I mean, it's good for them. Okay, they making money, but I just they need to, uh, the games need to start coming, man. Okay, but I mean, it's a good sign for them that if they can sell this what they're selling without hit games out there, then. Well, let's 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 break it down, and we'll, we'll go ahead and make your what you were saying, and then make your point. Then I'd let K bomb, and then we'll break it down system by system. That way, we can go in more detail of, of of it. So go ahead, finish your point. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's good that they're selling without these big games out there for that. You know, it's it's good, and I mean, I guess it's, I mean I ain't gonna say it's good. It's not good for me, but it's good for the companies. <laughs> Because then that lets them know that, hey, when they finally get off their butts and make some games, then they should be selling, too. Okay. Okay, Bob? Uh, I, I guess my number, I guess I'll put my input on that. I have a little bit more to say than, than John, but I, I'll say a little bit. Uh, I guess the, the numbers for the Xbox One was, what, 195, somewhere around, somewhere around there? Yeah. 
Yeah, one ninety five. Uh, after uh, I guess a, uh, I guess you can call it a hundred dollar price cut. I guess you can call it that. That's what we're going with. So uh, after that hundred dollar price cut, to, to see their numbers double is a to me is a pretty good thing for them. Uh, it should have some show some movement in sales and um, maybe even the perception of the Xbox One um, because I've seen a weird thing uh, it's a shift than what we saw last year I've watched some of the developer videos some of the videos that you know the developer the developers make before the game comes out and they show you they show themselves playing the game uh Last generation, you saw a lot of pretty much majority of the games that were multi-platform. Pretty much every developer was playing on the 360. Pretty much right. everybody was. Um, I've seen a shift in that because everyone I'm seeing now are, are playing on PS4s. You know, I don't know if it's just because that's the lead console that's that's leading right now, or you know maybe that's the console you use for the lead development is for is. PS4 is being used for lead development, but I'm seeing a lot of that. So maybe even this this doubling of the sale numbers for the Xbox One shows promise. The fact they're doing almost 200, you know, with like John said, without a, a key game. You know, their key game dropped in what's that about March? Titanfall right. drop right. somewhere around there. Um, so the fact that you know the numbers are doubling with a price cut and with the the hope of games to come. Uh, it show does show promise in that you know it shows that PS4 hasn't just won this generation. There's still a fight left. There's still going to be a battle for the next six, eight, ten years, however long this generation actually goes. Um, and then we quoted the Wii U numbers. I mean, I think it's pretty good that uh, the Wii U is growing. 233 percent increase is uh is good. I mean, you can't even. Uh, there's no way to shake it. That's that's a good increase. Um, I wonder how much momentum they're going to keep after uh, uh, the sales of Mario. I hope they have. Uh, they, uh, well, we, we 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 gonna go into details. Wait, okay, okay. I, I'll just, I'll be brief then. So, and um and, and Sony doing their thing. Uh, well, doing had selling without a hit game, even a hint of a key exclusive. Uh, still selling what they selling. Uh, I'm as a Sony fan. I still uh, am not sure. Uh, what Sony is doing to keep the momentum going. I know what uh, they're not doing. They're, they're not doing uh, stupid stuff, which, which is good. They're not doing anything to hurt themselves, but they're not doing anything to help grow their or help separate that difference between the two systems or, or three systems. Sorry. Right. So that, that's my piece about it right now. So, all right. So you kind of went over all three. So let's go back to John and I throw my sit in too. Um, Let's look at the PlayStation 4. Of course, the PlayStation 4 was the number one selling of June. And this number is not small, people. This is a big number. You know, 259,000 units. If I'm, like I said, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I, that's what I, that's, I know it's over 200 something thousand. But if I'm wrong on the, the last two numbers, correct me. But to sell that many units in a month and not have a game, uh, to really point to the for the reason that left me scratching my head, you know. Uh, and it's like what K Bomb said. What is Sony? It's like what has Sony done or shown, or did they do so, or was their presentation so potent? Um, at the beginning of this year, <laughs> uh, was it last year? No, and, and last year when they first revealed the uh, PlayStation Four and. You know the eight gigs of RAM, uh, G, whatever it is, and all them techno, all that stuff. Was it so? <laughs> I can't even remember now because I got so off that stuff. I can't even remember it. GDR five, is that it? GD, GG, yeah, yeah, DDR, yeah, something like DDR, that. DDR five, DDR eight, five. There you go. Eight gigs of RAM. Right. Look at you. You look at a quad like, processor. Oh, like stop that. it! Stop it, man. You Seven, just get, stop. Right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> anyway, was that presentation? I want to get you and John's thoughts. Was that presentation that potent that it has people still buying the system with not a game in sight to really point to? Like, and it was something you said, K. Bo. You sent me an article where like, I don't know if it was the president or 
who said that they're trying yeah. that they they had a stat to where they were reaching out to the we. Yeah. I was going, so, so who want to jump in? Yeah. If, you, if it's K Bum, go ahead. If it's John, you can no, I'll, I'll let John go. I'm gonna let John go. Um, it's 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 Sony. They fans, they fans just do that. They fans, they 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 buy their systems. I mean, they they they've done. It's what the, basically I will I will I want to say it's what they did with the since the PS2 era is the reason why they have such success in selling systems right now. You know, the they just when they came out in with the PS2 in that that era, they just revolutionized what gaming was at that point in time. And so it's, ever since then, it's just stuck with them. And they had their, their core fans that they've done it. Even when they had that $600 console, which smacked gamers in the face, <laughs> people still bought it. And me, me my, my dummy self bought it too, you know, for I, $600. Well, I, didn't, I didn't buy it, but I wanted it, but I didn't buy it. You know, and it's, it's, it's just that Sony console. Because you know, you know eventually they're going to come with the games. Now, I was scratching my head. Just I'm scratching. I'm scratching my head too about it, but then I just know it's just Sony. And Sony fans are going to buy the consoles, you know. And it's, it's just Sony, you know. It's the name brand. They they're going to buy that, you know. And also being that they, it's the it's the most powerful system out there now. That's the, that's another plus. Um, but at the same time, I'm scratching my head. It's like, why are y'all buying this? Because it's it's because other than other than the um actual computing power, it's to me it's still a lesser system than the PS3. Just, okay. This is my, my, my standpoint from it. So I'm scratching my head on that too still. You know? It's like, you know, I'm like, well, I, I can do this on the PS3. I can do this on the PS3. I can't do this <laughs> on this. I can't do this on this. I'm like, well, I, I had to sit the questions like, why did I buy this? <laughs> you know? I, like, what? I said, what was I smoking on? You know? But what? it's... But no, I'm scratching my head too. I don't I don't, I don't know. I, th- I just think it's that, it's that Sony juice. Now, the Vita... I have an issue with the Vita, and it's pissing me off too. It's because you know the PSP. We had the issue where they had the games, just the controls were finicky because they had that one analog stick. Now you fix that problem. Now they're making games that you could have made on the PSP, like the fight, all the fighting games. It's like I was, it's like flooded with fighting games and flooded with like Monster Hunter type games. You know, saying stuff that don't really need the second analog stick. Uh-huh. But then, then now, then they came out and started saying that, that they're going to focus on indie games. I'm sitting like, and now, now they're not going to focus on the AAA games. They're going to focus on indie games. I'm sitting like, what? What? That's a smack in the face. You know, because where's my stuff like the Uncharted and my Unit 13? You know, those are games that that that. Where's siphon filter, man? Yeah, I, stuff I like that. that. Where is that at? So. But now you gonna go back to games that basically, when you look at these games, they're games that I could have downloaded on my note. You know, <laughs> you know, I could have downloaded this on my Note three or my iPhone. You know, it's like I don't, I'm not getting what they're doing. Right. They have this powerful system, and they're not utilizing it. Okay, but I'm gonna jump in there, man. Uh, nah, I, I was gonna let him say his piece. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna interrupt. I, I, I didn't want to. I wouldn't interrupt. I thought. I was just, that's, 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 oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just disappointed in what they're doing with the video. They, they could do so much more with that, other than a, a secondary. Device for the PlayStation Four. Right, that's that's what they've been selling it as as a secondary device, which, you know, I, I don't think you can you can fully sell a handheld game as a secondary device and be successful. Uh, you, you'll get some people to try, but you know, you, you're not going to sell what you want. I guess you're just trying to get people to buy it, and then when they get it, they can, they're find out just good games. But you know, like you're saying, they're focusing on any games and not focusing on those those big hitters then you know they're they're doing some injustice to the actual vita system and uh and to your point of the ps4 you know i i do think that there's a difference i mean i i don't think it's the sony fans that's that's keeping the ps4 ahead of everybody uh because you know those sony fans couldn't do the same couldn't keep the ps3 up in front of everybody, and so I, I don't. I don't think it's it's just the Sony fan. I, I think, um, I to level what level said. I do think a piece of that conversation that they had uh, is still ringing with some of the people making decisions of buying a PS4. But decision isn't wasn't the numbers. It wasn't the gig the gig a gigabit of RAM or the processor speed. I think their main focus of just saying, "Hey, we gave we we're going to give the developers a system that." Uh, they can use to make the best games ever 
Uh, we've given them everything they, they wanted to make games. I think that conversation, the fo- fact that they focus on games more than anything, is maybe the, the, the driving force behind the, the lease sale and, and the fact that, you know, their, their competitors at that point were saying, hey, we, we know better than you guys know, and you guys being the fans, than you guys, and we're going to tell you what you're going to want your next gen system, and you're going to want all this and all this. And then they retracted everything they said, but, you know, a lot of people had. Uh, kind of made decisions and kind of turned their back on the, the the previous system. So I don't think it's just the Sony fans that's keeping the PS4 ahead of everybody. I think it's actually some some people who are leaving their their previous system of choice, which could have been the Wii, which could have been the 360, which could have been their their number one system of last generation, and are actually moving towards the PS4 being their number one system of choice. I think that's maybe more of the movement and why the PS4 is out, is out selling because um, if we're just looking at exclusive content, there's really isn't as of right now, no PS4 game um, that's, that's, that's making you, that's coming forward. That's like, wow, this is so different than anything else I can get on any other system. I mean, right. The, 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 the other game, the order, I mean, see, it's, it looks cool. I mean, but it looks like a, say a shooter, a third person shooter. I mean, it doesn't look like anything great like the first Uncharted did. You know what I'm saying? How they kind of changed the whole adventure uh, 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 genre. action genre. You know, they kind of changed it and flipped it on its head. So I don't really see anything coming, but I think, you know, they made some good decisions and they haven't shot themselves in the foot yet. I think that's the biggest thing. <laughs> They've gone the, the furthest without making a mistake. I agree. I agree with you, K-Bum. I think it is a combination of there's a lot of Xbox 360 and we owners that have that, you know, and I'm not talking about that casual market. I'm talking about hardcore, some, hardcore fans who have are not. I won't even say hardcore fans, but, but, but core fans, yeah. not hardcore fans, but core fans that have left the Wii didn't, and didn't see themselves buying into the Wii U. And then you got a lot of those PlayStation 2 fans who ran with the 360 and uh, jumping back to the PlayStation 4. So, so uh, that's what I see happen. But go ahead and jump in. No, no, that was that was that was about my point. That's about all, all I wanted to say. I, I mean, that's that's truly my feeling. Is is not just the Sony guys. I think it's the converts. I think the converts are pushing the system more than anything because you've already had your kill zone. You you already had your your infamous, which are two of the the, the big exclusives in the PS3 days. I think a lot of people actually missed out on some PS3 titles because they went 360 first or or actually had a Wii U system. Um, and I guess the, they're not trying to miss out this generation because the PS3 generation was the only generation for Sony that Sony didn't come in first place. So uh, I don't I don't know what that's going to happen for the rest of the lifespan of the PS4 because the PS2, like I said, was was so different. The games on there were so different than anything else that was going on at that point in time. So. Uh, the fact that PS4 games aren't as different as you can get on other consoles, I don't know if that's going to keep, if the momentum is going to stay. That's the right. thing. They have momentum now, but if they don't come out with games that's going to change, that's going to turn heads, the momentum, like you see already with Xbox creeping up and even the, the Wii U coming up with, with, with Mario Kart, you know what I'm saying? That momentum can, can quickly change. Right. Well, I, I, I was, I, I had to stop talking because somebody was talking to me. That's why I said go and jump in. Okay. But, uh, Oh, the second point I was gonna make was I think Sony is good at saying what people saying what they know people want to hear, even if what they're saying ain't necessarily the the whole truth, but they say it anyway. And I believe it's an it's an effective it's effective here in America because America wants you to lie to them, or I won't even say to lie to them. <laughs> <laughs> but Americans and you, John, y'all know I'm not lying. Uh, yeah, look at Japan. Look. The PlayStation 4 is not selling in Japan. Uh, but over here it's selling and it's selling like hotcakes. You know, it's selling and I, you know, it's, it's killing over here. And like you just said, K-Bomb, there's really no game. Okay. Infamous came out February. Was it February or March? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So Infamous has been out and Infamous ain't a system mover. So. 
But this system has been selling like crazy, and there's really nothing to point to to justify our... We're, our, we're, we're crack addicts. Right. And it's like, so what's going on? So it got to be... I don't know. So anyway, we can move from PlayStation 4 because we're getting close to where our cushion is. I don't want to go too far past an hour. Uh, Xbox One, 195. John Shaw, did you... Did I'm disappointed in them. Okay, go ahead. Really? Um, yep, I'm disappointed in them because now you have to connect and what the connect could have did. Now you had to you had to connect in every system there, right? So when develop uh, one of these developers when they finally decided that they wanted to actually utilize that and do something new with it, they have the they have the opportunity to know that every single console has that that piece of hardware in there. Versus now you you're 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 segregating your market. Some people are going to have it, some people aren't. So now now you don't have that motivation to do it. It was just like the same way when they had the hard drive. You know, some people had the bigger hard drive, some people didn't. You know, and that Halo that came out, they had had that mandatory install. Or if you only had that four gigabyte that four gigabyte console, you was kind of up up um. I'm, I changed words. I was like curse again. <laughs> I heard you. You just kind of up the creek without a paddle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, um, and it's like it's like that. You can't you can't segregate the the, the console thing like that. And it's like and for all my things, like you should just took the took the took the um connect and made it what it is. You know, if you wanted to drop the price, then just drop the price. You know, right? Don't take. I just feel like you just you just messed it up now because now the connect won't be nothing. Right. You you pretty much. Gave up on on what you was. Uh, you it seemed like you giving up on your heart on your uh your oh, yeah. piece of hardware. Yeah, you you give you giving up on it, and now for a developer that wants to actually make a game for it, it's, it's like that much harder. Yeah, it's that much harder because now they have to take into consideration like, well, how many actual people out here have the connect versus how many people had the right. console without the connect. Right. right okay. It's like it's like dang well. Well, let's just scrap the connect. Let's just make this game, you know, and we'll just we'll just half but the connect and make it a, a, a secondary option in case somebody wants to do it. And versus letting that be the focus. Yeah, I think they should have took the because either way it go, and I'm gonna let you jump in, K Bomb. Either way it go, Microsoft is taking a hit, taking the connect out the box and dropping the price at three ninety nine is no different than leaving the connect in the box and dropping the price three ninety nine because either way it go. The connect ain't selling. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So why not just take the initial hit, leave the connect in the box, even though I want the connectless, <laughs> the connectless box. I, that's what that would that would be motivation for me to buy because I don't want the connect. I, I just I still don't want the connect in my house. That's just me. But uh, it, but it, it, it seemed like if they would make it and make it not to where you have to have the connect on. If, like they showing like if they would have changed that where you can disconnect the connect. See the thing the, the thing with that is people blew that thing up so oh my god they just they they went so such secret service crap with that <laughs> they, they went to a whole other level. I bought it, bro. I bought it, man. I well, bought they went it through a whole other thing. It's it's not it's not even like that at all. Okay. It's like it's like it's like having it's it's the same thing as having your PS4 in standby. You know what I'm saying? It's all it is is just in standby. So the voice is there. So when it hears that certain that certain voice command, like say Xbox on, uh, it'll, it'll turn your system on. That's what it is. It's not the camera's not on. Big Brother's watching you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so like, they always tell people like, if y'all worry about that, then y'all need to get ready. Y'all gotta better go back to them flip phones in. Right. You're right. You're right. You know what what it was just and like, I did a video on it. It was just the fact that. You, they said it themselves. Whether if they would have just when, left, when they said it was on, when they said the connect is on, people was thinking it was the camera. It's not the camera. It's the, the voice activation part of it is right. on. It's, they, it's, and it has to, they, they it has to be on job. to turn it on. They did like, a horrible job of explaining this. You know, they blocked the, ex, the explaining and the, pre, the uh, presenting of that system. But because I love that feature, I like I like, I like coming. Coming downstairs from coming in from work, I say Xbox on, and I go to the toilet or something, and the Xbox is loading up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I get through this bathroom, wash my hands. I go walk in front of the TV. Oh, it says hi, John. You know what I'm saying? Log in. <laughs> see, see, you know what I'm saying? Now, see, this is what messed me up. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be straight transparent. I was, you know, the Xbox on, Xbox off, the voice recognition stuff was cool to me. I think that's cool. It was when they said, man, we can read your heartbeat. 
and we could detect, <laughs> and we could tell who when somebody else came in a room and we know who they are. I'm like, wait a minute, bro, that's that's a little bit too. Uh, Look, I, see, I, that see the only reason they know is because before you, because when you set it up, you gotta put your face there, right? Right. And PlayStation has this feature. See, this is the thing that people don't even say nothing. <laughs> PlayStation, the PlayStation camera does the exact same thing, but nobody talks about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, but that's you put because, your, because PlayStation camera was option. You know. Yeah. You put your you put your face in there. You set it all up and stuff, right? Yeah. And you set it all up and stuff, so it, it remembers your face. So when you walk, when you after you and this is after you turn it on. After you turn the system on, if it sees your face, it will automatically log you in. You know what I'm saying? It will log you in to your, your to your profile. So let's say if I have if I have everybody in my family's house and they, and they, they their faces in my profile thing, uh-huh. or they, they, I mean if their faces for the individual profile. So like my son came down, he's walked in front of TV. It will log him into his thing. Right. Yes, you know that's crazy to me, man. I mean, but it's tight. But sh- Gone. They can keep the connect, but uh, <laughs> but I'm still like now. But with that 399 skew, uh, I'm thinking about, and I've been telling my boy K Bun for a minute, man. I'm, 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 I gotta do my video first. I won't say nothing. I'm leave that alone. Yeah, anyway, leave it alone. Leave it alone. We let, we gonna skip over the 3ds because you know the 3ds been doing this thing pretty much since since the it's initial on time. Not nah, well, it went through a wall, but it came out. But the 3DS is doing good. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to do its thing. Let's jump to the Wii U, um, and then we're going to move on, then we're going to try to close it out. Um, 140,000 units. Now, that is not as big as you know, the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4. But looking at where the Wii U was and how it was moving, and then taking into account that it's been moving pretty consistently since Mario Kart 8, What's y'all take? Hey, Bon, go ahead. Uh, I'm actually excited about it. I'm excited about you know the fact that Wii U is is selling and even increasing in the sale because you know they, I don't know how long they could have sustained with numbers as low as they were. So the fact that, to my surprise, one game is pretty much you know shocked it back to the to, into existence you know I, I think it's pretty good and i i just hope that they can like i was trying to i was saying a little bit of further they can continue this success they can t- continue this momentum i just hope it's not you know a quick so- shock to success and then you know it's so slowly starts to fade back out the thing with the wii u is that they have games that these other two consoles don't have you know and, and that's some well one of the points i was talking about sony is that sony doesn't really have anything that you can't get on another system well the wii u has that it has several games coming out this this year this year that you won't be able to find on any other console so if because I, I like actually like three console race i don't want it to be down to just sony and microsoft i like the fact that there is an option a third option, which is the Wii U, which they do things, you know, their way. Nintendo do things that they want to do it, you know. So I, I, I'm, I'm happy, and, and I really hope they can sustain this, and not even just sustain it, but even build it up a little bit more, so they can, so it can be a, a, a real competitive fight for that first place spot. You know, you don't want one console just winning it all. You, you want to have that, so you can have <laughs> diversity. You, you really want diversity. That's when you get the <laughs> best games. Uh, I, I speak on the hand of Madden. Madden was at his best when they had competition. When you lose that competition, you kind of you can slide back because you're the only person in the, in the game. Right, you, you don't know nobody. Yeah, it don't really need to uh, innovate when it's just you. But when there's somebody breathing down your back the entire console generation, you know what I'm saying? You don't get that innovation, innovation that you really need to make people say, "Wow, wow!" How do they think of that? You know, and that's that's because of competition. Competition made them do those things and make those changes. So. Uh, I, I hope this is a uh, a trend that we're going to see for the Wii U that they actually start to build this momentum and continue with it. That's my thought. John, go ahead, John. Yeah, I, I say I think it's good if they can <clears throat> if they can continue the momentum. I feel like they will, but there's this little window of time that that's that's, that's bothering me. But here I'm going. I'm going to go, on, I'm gonna go you explain what I'm saying. Like they got they got the Mario Kart right now, right? Uh-huh. And that should they should get hold them off till September. It was it September twenty sixth? Is when High Rewards come out, you know. Right. And then and then in October, October you got Bayonetta two. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying. Then in November you got Sonic Boom. 
You know what I'm saying? Then in December, you got Watch Dogs finally coming out for that console. Finally. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Then you got Captain Toad in December, too. And then you got Smash Bros. in December. Actually, they said that there's a rumor leaked that Smash Bros. is coming on the 21st of November. I don't know if that's true, but... Anyway, if they do that, then that's even better. But, right. but, but basically, they, if they can keep this momentum up through that whole holiday season, through this whole holiday season all the way through January, it's great. But, I have to say, when I'm looking at these next games... It's saying everything's not coming back out to the, the next December. Ooh. Okay. You know I got saying? you. I got you. Go ahead. Go, go. That's, so you got what, you got Mario that's why I wish, I wish Red Knight was here. He'll he he jump into this. Go Mario, ahead. Make, Mario Maker not coming out to December the 2015. You know what I'm saying? Xenoblade not coming out to December 2015. Splatoon not coming out to 2015. Kirby's Curse not coming out to 2015. Now, you know what Splatoon's saying? Supposed, they said Splatoon was coming out early 15, so I'm thinking in the first quarter or the, uh, the first few months of 15. So, well, as, of right, as of right now, on my, um, my what you call it, it's, I don't know how accurate it is for game vlog, but on my game vlog, that's what it's saying, it's 1231. Release date, 1231, 15. And my thing is like, well, what's what's we're at January, February, March, April, May. What's coming in between them? Right. Well, like I said, I, I know with uh, Treehouse when they was doing the, uh, you know, they was showcasing the game. Uh, they was talking about an early 2015 release uh, for the first. I'm thinking in the first two to three months of 2015. So I was thinking either February, or March. That game is gonna be coming out because Smash Bros. They gonna no Nintendo. They gonna to try to get Smash Bros. before Christmas. They got they gonna not they are not gonna push that after Christmas. So it's gonna when it, when I saw the that uh, rumor that it was or the leak it's supposed to be a leak that it was uh, suggesting that it was coming out on the twenty first of November. That seemed about right because that's right around that Christmas Black Friday push. And Nintendo always likes to get. You know what I'm saying? That push going before then, like even down to Mario 3D World. If you saw it, it came out. It came out bef uh, bef in November. They pushed it back and switched Donkey Kong and pushed Donkey Kong into uh, February. So I'm thinking Splatoon is February. Thinking Smash is November. And if that happens, then Bayonetta and Hyrule Warriors, and then the other games like the Sonic Booms. And there's a few other games. Watch Dogs is Doom. Watch Dogs is Doom. You're going to have a few people get it. I might even get it. But on the Wii U, that game is straight Doom. So it ain't no point mentioning Watch Dogs. But uh, there's a few other games coming out. And then indie games coming out as well within that time frame. So I'm thinking that momentum. Because Smash Bros. is going to be either on par with Mario Kart 8. Or it might surpass. And I think it might surpass Mario Kart 8. Cause it's bigger Smash Bro fans than it is Mario Kart 8 fans, but Mario Kart 8 seem to be the more casual, friendly game of the two. So I see them continuing it. Uh, so, but yeah, hey. yeah, man, they continue it through this through this holiday season, right? Now, but yeah, what, right. What uh, 2015 for, like, is up in the air. It's, it really yeah, what, is. It's like, what are they doing for the rest of the year? Because I like some of these games. Like I said some of these games saying they're not coming back out till the next Christmas. Well, I well. Like I said, I don't know about it. I don't know if the, the site that you got didn't like, get a date, so they just saying. Like, Devil's Dirt is still to be announced, but I thought they said this fall, though. Right. Because I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I know Splatoon was said early 2015. Uh, X. I was uh, thinking it was going to be before the next E3. I'm thinking X going to come out before the next E3, so... I don't know, man. I, and I'm thinking maybe Nintendo thinks my, that they're gonna make this big push through this holiday season, and then maybe some third party developers, are, you know, come come back. But possibly, but but they they gonna have to do something because they can't just they can't just go the whole year again. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they can't have them long stints of no games. Nintendo can't now. Sony and some reason Sony and Microsoft can, but Nintendo can't. That's that makes me scratch my head too. But anyway, uh. Let's get off that. Uh, we're going to get to our last topic, then we're going to close out. Um, Y'all brought up Destiny, the beta, and both of you guys have got, have the, had the opportunity to play it. Um, hit on that a little bit, then we're going to you know, sign out. 
uh, I, I guess I'll go ahead and go first on that. Uh, I, I did get a chance to play Destiny and the the Alpha, the Alpha when it came out during E3, and I got a chance to get get some game time in during the during the beta, which is out right now, which is uh, what Friday the twenty fifth until Sunday, and uh, I, I, I like it. It actually. Uh, the, being part of the beta kind of put this game on my radar. Uh, and actually, not only to put it on my radar, it put put it on my must-have list. You know, so I, I'll say that by saying I, I don't play too many MMOs or even RPGs. I'm kind of not a big fan of RPGs, but uh, the games that I did play that were RPG-like uh, was you know was Mass Effect. You know, so the, the whole sci-fi futuristic you know what I'm saying, kind of feel, kind of really speaks to me. And I, I really do like that. And the fact that Destiny is uh, it's kind of like that, but, you know, th- they've done something in this game that I haven't really seen in other games, and it's the fact that, you know, you can be on in one map doing your own little, your own mission that you're instructed to do, and you can run across two, three, four other players doing a totally different mission, and, you know, you can run across those guys and then something happened There's a big ship comes and drops down, you know, uh, a community community event that uh, everybody in the and actually in that area actually helps out and finish. And you guys can can beat this particular level together. And then uh, after that, you, you shake hands, say goodbye, do a little dance and then you continue on doing your little mission. They, they go their totally different way. Um, I know for me that that was that that first experience actually doing that. And that being single player, the fact that you're not actually single anymore, uh, I've actually started to see that more in a lot of games. Uh, new Need for Speed game was kind of like that, where in your single single player game, you can be playing your little mole, a racer, or a policeman, and you can come across somebody that was playing their own single player. Uh, I'm actually starting to see that. You're starting to see that a lot more in games than the next generation, and I kind I like it. I like it. It, it actually made me. Uh, it's something different. That you didn't get last generation, or you didn't get that much, and so uh, not only did you know the the beta put this game on my radar, put it on my must-have list, and so uh, for anyone out there still trying to get access, uh, I know there, I don't know if it's open, it may be open, or there may be beta keys being thrown all over the place, so check it out. But you know, for me, Destiny seems like a seems like a hot game. I, I still want to see what they're going to do with the whole. Um, MMO features or RPG, uh, RPG f- features, but uh, from what I've played so far and how I see the game progressing, it seems like it can be a very, very deep game. And not even including the, the, the not just the co-op, but the competitive mode. They have a whole competitive mode that I haven't really tried because I've been too busy into the story mode. Okay. John? Yeah, basically everything he said. Um, at first, I wasn't I, I was still clueless. I just didn't get the hype about the game from just the trailers. Everybody was, and at the E3 conferences and stuff, everybody was so hyped. Especially Torrance. Torrance was like, oh my God, I can't wait for Destiny. I was like, I, was like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get it. Cause we, and we were sitting there at the, we were sitting there at the, um, we was, we was at the, um, I think it was the Sony conference where they showed it and they had all the people come out on stage and play it. I was just sitting there like, I was looking at it, I was like, I don't get it. I don't get what's so great about it. It's like, cause he was, he, they was just like, oh. So then I, I played it. <laughs> I played it. I was like that at first. And then then when I started seeing it, like how he said, you see other people coming into your game and stuff, it's like, I was like, yeah, okay, this is this, this, this is it right here. I said, then I like the little, the little, like he said, the different events that could pop up. I, it was the one event popped up, but I died. And so I didn't get to go back to it. Um, <laughs> and it was, it, yeah, it was so somebody had to chase some dude with this flag or whatever. Oh, okay. I ain't did that one yet. It was something to do with a flag, or whatever. You had to chase him down. It's, it's, you had to kill him or something. And um, he was on a high level, or whatever. But um, I died. I guess it went away from me or something. I don't know. But um, I couldn't see him again. Okay. But um, yeah, it was it was it was pretty cool. And like, I, and another part that sold me on it because I didn't know they didn't mention it before was but the actual adversary mode, the, um, the regular multiplayer in it. You know. Yeah. The competitive multiplayer part. I didn't know, like, did nobody ever said anything about it. I thought it was just going to be just a single player. I was like, okay, I don't get what's so hype about it. But in that being able to do that and do the player versus player, that's, that's, that's cool. I like that. Okay. Hey, I'm going to throw one more in there because I guess it, it was a, the second moment when I was like, okay, 
I got to get this game. Uh, it was one level that me and my buddy played on. And what, what I what I liked about it is that we actually had to use strategy to beat this level. You know, we couldn't come in guns blazing and just do what I want to do to win a game. We actually were calling out enemies. We were calling out locations. We were calling out, you know, well, I'm going to take this guy out. Because a lot, a lot of the, the main enemies, you know what I'm saying, you need everybody on your team to actually try to help you take these dudes out because they, they're, the life bar kind of is kind of long. You want to make sure you take them out. And after I got done, I think me and my buddy took us 45 minutes to clear one, le- to clear this level. About 45 minutes, and I told my buddy afterwards, I'm like, that's that was epic. You know, it, it's been a long time since I've actually played a game that actually took that much effort to beat the level. You know, and that that put the game on on good until the level actually being epic. It was one of those fights I thought was was epic because we, we did everything we could to try to win this boss and it didn't seem like we were going to win. It was many times I bet was against the wall. He was ready to throw in the towel. Like, I'm done. I ain't going to do this. The so you was we, lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you was lucky because you got with your friends. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, enjoy, I, had some, I had some dummies on my team. Dummies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dummies. And that's the thing. I, th- I think I want to say it was about an hour and a half for me. An uh, hour and a half for you? Yeah. yeah dummies I, I, I was kill. basically doing it myself. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, look, they kept dying. I had to keep going to revive. I was like, you know what? I ain't, I'm not reviving you no more. That's what I was like. That's what's up. <laughs> well, so it seems like both of you guys are saying that though Destiny might turn out to be uh, pretty uh, worthy of the hype. So, but. I would uh, say so. If you have a PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or a PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, um, I think John said it's open right now. Yeah, that's what I, was, that's what I read on Twitter. It says it's open, it's open beta now. So, oh, for sure. So if it's an open beta, go on your system and find... I don't know how... I, I, ain't turn, I don't turn on my PS3 unless I'm watching Blu-rays. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Kay. You know I had to do that. But no, uh, for real, I really don't. Uh, so, but I might turn it on. I'm not an FPS type of person, but I do like um, games where I can you know, shoot up K-Bomb or... Uh, 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 not shoot up, but I'm talking about hit you up to play. Okay, it. my bad. And okay. John Shaw and I, you know, I'm talking. I like that type of stuff. I, I, uh, I really didn't get into that till we started doing the Madden tournaments, and I was like, man, I really, because it kind of brought it back to that feel when you no, know, I use Mario Kart because you know me, my brother, and my my group, the uh, my group that we uh, it, it consists of a few, and one of them, my brother, and then a brother that. He really ain't my brother, this other guy, but he's almost like my brother. We was Mario Kart heads, and we would just sit up all night playing Mario Kart. And when I got into the Madden, and because we all moved away, got grown, you know, kids, you know, you don't have time to just come together and, and sit in the same house like that anymore. Um, and that's something Nintendo really needs to embrace. But uh, I started playing Madden with my boy K-Bum. And when I put the earphones on my ear, you could hear the dude talking to you and talking back. It was almost like he was in my house with me, even though he wasn't. So it kind of brought that feel back. So I like games like that where you got a community, you got to work together as team, you know, teamwork, and you take this guy out, I got that guy. I like that. So I might have to check out Destiny, but you know me, I can't stand first person shooters. So uh, it's, it's worth it's worth the check. So I check it out. But uh, yeah. Go cop that Wii U, Mario Kart 8. <laughs> get off your do nothing and go get that, cause Mario Kart is whooping that tail right now. Um, I want to say this before we get out of here. You know I gotta leave this. You know this is you know you know I gotta go to my Nintendo roots. I'm sorry, but do I got you gotta do, brother Joe Channel. Mario Kart 8 is competing with and on one system with games that are on multiple systems, and it's it's at number two. In the top ten, that is crazy to me. And then uh, Tamadashi, like something like that. I can't think of that 3DS game. It's number nine. So there was there was big moves. Nintendo did some big things, but Sony right now to me, Sony has the formula to get people to buy their hardware. And that, and and I don't care what um, lane you float down. If you you just a gamer, if you're a Sony gamer, if you're a Microsoft gamer, if you're a Nintendo gamer, PC head. You got to give Sony they do. Whatever they doing is working. And so let me say that. But uh, anyway, any like, final thoughts before we get out of here? Nope. All right. John Shaw says nothing. 
Um, hope gamers, hope you find something to play gamers until uh, <laughs> until the winter. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> winter is coming. Right. <laughs> and let me say this, man. Uh, the the topic we started off with. I think I'm gonna pick that back up, and I'm gonna make that a a. a, a I'm gonna dedicate a. Uh, live and level or straight talk. That might be a straight talk. We might put that one on straight talk and right. um, invite some folks in and really dialogue it out and get some people that I normally don't bring in. I got some ideas of people I'm going to invite that I normally don't interact with and have that conversation because I think that's a conversation that needs to continue. So, John, I'm gonna have you back definitely. K Bum and Carson, you're gonna be there. But I'm gonna try to get some of them cats like, you know, uh I would love to get Torrance on a conversation like that. Uh some other folks in this YouTube community that uh to me, that's a conversation that need to be had. So with that yeah, being Torrance, Torrance uh, be good his, because he got like twenty years in it. Right. And I and he and he, you know, he's he been expressing his frustrations with the industry and I'm pretty sure that has a lot to do with it as well. So uh, with that being said, this is Live and Level Gamers Podcast. This is your boy, uh, a level head. My, like I said, Mr. Live will be back for the next one. So stay tuned and then look forward to either a Live and Level or a Straight Talk that is dedicated to the subject that we started off with. But with that being said, keep your heads up. And this is us signing out. Deuces. Peace.